I was shocked, literally frozen in my bedroom doorway. My mind whirled and my vision blurred. Three Amishattal City reigned supreme as I struggled to comprehend what was happening. The evidence of my eyes was certainly unmistakable, but my mind refused to accept it. Uh, I saw my naked wife lying on her back in the middle of our bed. Nothing seemingly unusual, I had seen her like this for twenty-three years, but... There was a large, hairy gentleman between her legs having her, and she obviously craved it desperately. My ears were also getting proof. You like that, baby? It was the voice of Jack, one of the managers in the office where my wife worked. I wondered about the term married pussy. Were her breasts and ass unmarried? Yes, Jack, come on, come on. That was the voice of Amanda, my loving wife. Take me, Jack. The action slowed down. Jack almost stopped moving and my wife clung desperately to him. He teased me, she whimpered. Cedric doesn't have you that good, does he, baby? His voice was as annoying as a summer fly. What? Take me. She was apparently in no mood for conversation. Her comparative skills regarding fucking grades seemed to be impaired. I'm better than Cedric, aren't I, babe? Stop talking and fuck me, Mandy commanded sharply. Tell me I'm better than Cedric, demanded he. Yeah, all right. You're better than Cedric. He threw back his head and laughed. He seemed very pleased with himself. I, however, was not pleased at all. My special forces training had taken its toll on my body, and I had become a lean, mean killing machine. I shook my head to clarify where this was coming from. The closest I'd gotten to special forces was when I bought a camouflage hat at an army surplus store. I took three steps and grabbed Jack by the hair on the back of his neck. He must have thought my loving wife was clutching him in her arms because he kept moving into her. I threw his head back and punched him in the cheek with all the force I could muster. All of good old Jack's movement stopped and he collapsed. His face was turned the other way from me, and I let Jack's head fall back down. This blocked Amanda's field of vision as she opened her eyes and turned toward me. One would have thought that a loud sound, like a chef's hatchet hitting a piece of meat when I hit it, should be heard. Apparently it wasn't. She still had no idea I was in the room. I turned and walked quickly out, treading silently on the carpet. I stood outside the door and listened. It looked like I had knocked out my wife's lover. My hands were trembling violently. I was very concerned about this. After all, my hands are my life. I do a lot of typing, and without working hands, I would have a hard time. I heard Amanda start to get angry. What the hell is going on with you, Jack? Jack? Oh my God, you're bleeding. Get off of me. Jack obviously wasn't responding. I wondered what I should do. I might have to consult Google. Google knows everything. I decided I should check it out from my car preferably away from my house. I went downstairs, got in my car, and drove to a park about three blocks away. I pulled out my phone and pondered the question. You have to be very specific with Google, or it will give you answers to questions you didn't ask. How do you phrase it? What should you do when you knocked out a man fucking your wife in your bedroom? That seemed reasonable. Okay, Google. I asked this question. The first two links were to jokes. I like jokes, so I looked up the first of those. A couple were pretty good. What's the best way to blind your wife? I've always wondered that question. Three async her over the windshield. That was pretty funny. I laughed. LOL, I can come up with text messages just as good as these. Why didn't my husband report his credit card stolen? This was a mystery to me. The thief spent less than his wife. This also elicited a chuckle, but didn't help my problem. The third was, the number one clear sign your wife is about to cheat. Well, it was a little late for that one. I wished I'd read it sooner. All the obvious signs were probably right in front of my face, and in my ignorance, I had missed them. However, I wondered what was written about it, so I checked the text. It turned out to be a treatise written by misogynists. If my wife was denying me sex during her fertile cycle, she was going to cheat. I had to keep track of her fertile cycles. Since I had no idea when they were and she was on the pill, it didn't seem helpful. Google was proving to be useless. I had to figure something out on my own. I heard a siren wailing in the distance. An ambulance whistled past. I wondered what would happen next. A police car soon followed. Suspecting that I must not be in the neighborhood, I drove back to work, entered through the back door, and headed for my office. No one noticed me. I called Lauren and asked her to come over. Lauren is my secretary.
I needed to send a couple emails urgently, so I handed them to her. I thought you went to mail them yourself, she said. No, I've been busy, I said. Something about business suddenly came up. She took the letters and went back to her desk. I worked the rest of the day, though it was a little difficult because of the pain in my arm, and then went home. I was very curious as to what Mandy was going to say about today's incident. As I entered the house, I could smell dinner cooking, something with oregano and garlic. I hoped it was something Italian. I love Italian food. Mandy was busy in the kitchen. I walked in, and she smiled at me. Hi, honey, she said. How was your day? I kissed her cheek and squeezed her buttock at the same time. She always had a very firm ass. It was fine, I replied. Tell me, Mandy, do you know the best way to blind a woman? She rolled her eyes. What? Three AC are over the windshield, I said. She grinned slightly, realizing it was an internet joke. So how was your day? I asked. Was there anything exciting? No, the usual, she said. Hmm. Her usual day consisted of being fucked in our bedroom by someone other than her husband. She couldn't finish because said bastard fell unconscious. And then there was a visit from the ambulance and the police. I never suspected she led such an interesting life. I'm going to shower and change, I said to Amanda. Okay, dinner will be ready in about half an hour. Going upstairs, I looked around. I expected to see yellow tape marking our bedroom as a crime scene, but nothing. The bed was disassembled, and I found a small spot of blood on the mattress. I had to wonder how it got there. The explanation might be interesting. When I went downstairs, everything was ready and we had a friendly dinner. We went into the living room and Amanda turned on the TV. We sat down on the couch and she snuggled up against me. Everything seemed perfectly normal. Listen, honey, I began. I noticed a small spot of blood on our mattress. How do you think it got there? I felt her tense up next to me, then relax after a few moments. I was shaving and cut my leg, she explained. I didn't notice right away, and there was some blood on the mattress. Yep, that explains it, I said. I grabbed her leg and began to examine it closely. Amanda tensed up again. What are you doing? She asked. Looking for the cut, I explained. I want to kiss it so it will heal faster. No, that was a while ago. Amanda said nervously. That's really sweet, though. I have something else you could kiss if you're interested. No, no, I'll just look for cut marks, I said. I think that answer surprised her somewhat. I rarely turn down an opportunity to kiss something else. Anyway, the idea of kissing something that had recently been occupied by an unconscious man wasn't very appealing. Well, basically occupied by any man, for that matter, except me. She looked at me with some concern. I feigned indifference and Amanda relaxed again. Do you want to watch a couple episodes of something on Netflix? I asked. She seemed cooperative. So we watched It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. She likes it. I don't hate it, so we compromised. Then she tried to get me into bed, but I told her I had a couple of urgent papers to go over and she went to take a bath. She was probably horny from the interrupted intercourse with her lover, but I had no intention of scratching that particular itch. I had business to attend to. We had been happily married for 23 years. She'd given me my beautiful daughter Bailey, and she'd been a good wife and mother. I had no intention of selling her into slavery, although I had heard there were always slots available in those Mexican brothels. I'd never actually been in any of them, but that's what they say on the street. I didn't even know any Mexicans, so that ruled it out. I was pretty sure a guy named Raul from my job was from Guatemala. A Guatemalan brothel just didn't seem to have that kind of sound. Since that was ruled out of the plans, I had to decide what to do next. I made a list. I put home at the top of the page. I never liked that place. I would give it to Amanda. Then the division of the other assets would be much more equitable. The other assets were what I wanted. I erased Dom and put Bailey there. I really wanted Bailey. She's a 20-year-old college sophomore, so of course there wouldn't be custody issues, but I wanted her. She lived in an off-campus apartment and came home on weekends. She also lived with us during the summer, so that could have been awkward. I had to deal with it. A no-fault divorce means we would split everything right in half, so I didn't have to worry about gathering evidence. The only evidence I would need would be for Bailey. She was the one asset I wasn't going to share with Amanda. And I think I know how to accomplish that. I sat down at my computer and checked out the surrounding medical facilities. 
I know a thing or two about hospitals. I sell and troubleshoot their software. We software specialists always have a backup to our systems. I found out where they were keeping dear old Jack and decided to pay him a visit in the morning. He had a fractured eye socket and cheekbone, and also turned out to have a concussion. He would still be there in the morning, safe and sound, so I could inspect the damage. I took some time to line up my goals, and by the time I went to bed, it was one o'clock in the morning. Mandy was asleep, and that suited me just fine. She snuggled up against me, and I shuddered a little. She seemed kind of gross. I wouldn't want to see her touching me. Amanda's transformation was amazing. She went from damn sexy to disgusting all in one day. Do you know how some women can transform themselves with makeup? It was the opposite, and all the Estee Lauder on the planet couldn't change that. She still wasn't up when I left for work this morning. Her work doesn't start until nine. I leave at seven. I brewed some coffee, filled my travel cup but didn't drink it and put some garlic powder in it. I grabbed a scone and got ready to leave. Then I had other thoughts. Garlic powder doesn't go well with coffee. I added some of it to the rest of the muffin. There, now they matched. The balance in the universe was restored. I made sure my phone was charged and drove to the hospital. My friend Lila happened to be on duty. She's the hospital administrator, and I told her I needed to work on the servers. She gave me a plastic pass and left. I asked the lady at the information desk about dear old Jack, and she cheerfully gave me his room number. He was awake when I walked in, but I don't think he recognized me. His face was quite swollen. They had bandaged his head like a mummy's. It must be very hard to see with one eye covered in bandages and the other swollen to a slit. It looked like it would be hard for him to turn his head, too. His face looked like it was hurting now, almost as badly as my arm after being hit. I took his medical records and scanned them with my phone. Then I walked around his bed, taking pictures from different angles. He was mumbling something incoherently, but I wasn't paying attention. I turned in my pass and went to work. I got a text from Mandy around 8.30. We have something wrong with the coffee pot. Well, in my opinion, it tasted fine. I put out some burning questions and told Lauren I was taking the rest of the day off. I called Bailey and arranged to meet her for lunch. It was Friday and her last class was at noon. I was hoping she would want to come home with me. But it didn't go so well. At first, Bailey didn't believe me at all. She even accused me of trying to leave my mom. After I told her what happened, showed her the scans of the maps and the pictures of the mummy, she cried, and I had to hold her hands for a long time, calming her down. I didn't mind that one bit, except that I wanted to cry myself. Eventually, she got over herself and just boiled over with anger. What are you going to do, Daddy? Bailey asked. What do you think I should do? I've heard that Mexican brothels always have vacancies, she said. Ah, my daughter has poured balm on my heart. No, though I've thought of that too, I said. We seem to be missing some necessary conditions. Well, divorce her and leave her with nothing, my daughter suggested. She didn't like that at all, but she understood me. Well, she wouldn't get half of it from me, Bailey explained her thought. She, having calmed down, wanted to go home immediately and face Mandy. That's what I wanted too, so she followed me home. Mandy hadn't gotten home from work yet, so we just chatted and talked strategy. When Mandy walked in and saw us sitting on the couch, she rushed over to hug Bailey. But her daughter pulled her mother aside with a sharp gesture. What was that? Exhaled a stunned Mandy. That was, I don't want you to touch me, Bailey said bilefully. I don't know where your hands were. Mandy's jaw dropped. I used some antibacterial stuff on the way home, she said. And why are you all suddenly worried about germs? I'm not worried about germs, Bailey said. I just thought you might have stuck your hands down some jerk's pants at work and then forgotten to wash them. Now Mandy was completely shocked. Bailey, what's wrong with you? She asked demandingly. You've never talked to me like that before. You need to apologize immediately. You're right, Mom, Bailey said, and Mandy's face seemed to stop scowling. I've never talked to you like that before. You should get used to it, though. You've never been a slut before, at least not as far as I know. Mandy looked at me in surprise. What's going on, Cedric? She asked, perplexed. Well, after I told Bailey about the little visit from the ambulance and police yesterday, she has this attitude towards you, I replied. She stared at me, shifted her gaze to Bailey, back to me, 
and I saw her eyes kind of glaze over. She sank to the floor, head bowed, and whispered something to herself. I couldn't make out exactly what she was saying, but it sounded like, no, please, no. Bailey and I looked at each other. I think we started getting up at the same time. We helped Mandy up and sat her in the chair. It tilted sideways, but the chair had big padded armrests that kept her upright. I need to lie down, she said in a weak voice. I just need to lie down for a minute. We helped Mendy over to the couch. About halfway across, she finally collapsed. We laid her down and put her head and feet on the cushions. She didn't have a heart attack or anything like that just now, did she? Bailey asked. No, I think she's just passed out, I said. She'll come to in a minute or so. We waited, talking about school, work, just some mundane things. And pretty soon, Mandy groaned. Bailey went to the kitchen and brought a cool, damp cloth and a bottle of water. She washed her mother's face and helped her drink some of the water. Mandy calmed down a little, and the first thing she asked was, How did you know? How did you know what? I asked. I didn't want to make it easy for her. How did you know that I was, uh, seeing someone? You were seeing someone. Bailey's voice oozed sarcasm. What happened yesterday, Mom? You were seeing someone? Guess what? I must have met a thousand people today. Is this the kind of meeting we're talking about? Bailey, I think you should go to your room and give your father and I some privacy, Mandy said. This doesn't concern you. Your father and I love you very much, but this is between us and has nothing to do with you. Steam seemed to rise from Bailey's head. Go to my room, she muttered furiously. You think I'm ten years old. I am a grown woman. You have no right to tell me to go to my room. If I were ten and you told me to go to my room, I wouldn't have done it even then. I don't listen to whores. If daddy wants me to go to my room, I'll go. I respect him. She looked at me. No, no, I'm fine, I said. Bailey immediately went back to talking. And what the hell are you talking about? It's none of your business. It sure as hell does concern me. I had a family. Now you've ruined it. Bailey was practically screaming. This doesn't concern me. Are you out of your mind? Spring break starts in two weeks. What do you think I was going to do? I was going to go home and spend some time with my mom and dad. What am I going to do now? I'm damn sure not going to spend them with your stinking ass. My daughter had a very bold tongue. I had never heard her use words like that before. She was furious. Mandy looked at me helplessly. Cedric, I, uh, I'm so sorry, she broke into hysterical sobs. This went on for about five minutes. Bailey handed her a box of tissues. When she calmed down, I had a few questions for her. What exactly are you apologizing for, Mandy? Are you sorry for loving Jack? Are you sorry that he has you better than I do? She asked. You were there. What did you do? How? I can explain. Please stop for a minute and let me explain. Explain what? I asked. Didn't you fuck that asshole on our bed? Was that a hologram? She shook her head desperately. Please stop, she pleaded. Just let me, I'm so upset I can't think clearly. What did you do, Cedric? I haven't done anything, I replied. According to the police, you must have hit him with something. And I was at work, remember? How do you know that? You were here, Cedric, I know you were. You couldn't know everything if you weren't here. I have spy devices all over my house, I said mockingly. I know everything. Didn't I tell you I was recruited by the CIA and the mafia when we were in college? I figured you out, Mandy. Now I'm going to kidnap good old Jack, torture him, and put him in a secret prison. I'm saving the mob connections for you. I'm thinking concrete shoes for both of you. Stop it. She covered her ears with her hands. Please, just give me a break for a minute. Maybe you'll have time to come up with some good lies while you rest, Bailey said. Daddy, let's let Mom rest and you can take me to the snowstorm at DQ. And off we went to DQ. I got myself a Heath bar, and for Bailey, I got cookies and cream. Let's get pumpkin pie spice cookies for Mom, Bailey giggled. She has a very cute giggle, and she knows full well that Mandy hates pumpkin. By the time we got back, I think Mandy was rested. She was sitting on the couch with her arms around her head. She looked up when we walked in. Bailey handed her a blizzard pie. Mandy absent-mindedly took a bite and wrinkled her nose. She placed it on the coffee table. Cedric Bailey, please sit down, she said. 
I need to explain to you what happened. I'm not interested in what happened, I replied. All I'm interested in is what you're going to do. That seemed to throw her off balance a bit. Why is it that people who do despicable things always think they can explain? Somehow, victims of despicable acts are obligated to listen while their misfortune is explained to them. I refuse to be a victim. I don't know what to do, Mandy said frustratedly. What do you want me to do? How about go somewhere far away, the daughter said. Bailey, please, Mandy begged. You're not helping. Helping what? Bailey asked. Mom, you just ruined our family. Do you think any of us will ever survive what you did? I hope you both get over it, Amanda said hopefully quietly. I made a huge mistake. If you, Cedric, just give me a chance, I'll show you that I won't do it again. Haven't either of you ever made a mistake? Yes, Bailey said mockingly. Last week I got a negative instead of a positive on my algebra test. She looked at me. Oh yeah, I had that too, I added. Just last week, I ordered a new SD card for my tablet. I got the wrong size and had to return it. We both looked at Mandy. Okay, I get it, she admitted. Mistake wasn't the right word. It was worse than a mistake, much, much worse. I was really stupid, and I'm so sorry. If you'll let me, I'll show you how sorry I am. Why did you blow the guy's brains out? Bailey inquired. If you had doubts, why didn't you just ask him to leave? So how do you know about this? I know you did something, Cedric. You've been here. You know what he said. I didn't mean anything like that. It was just something he... The situation seemed to be quite desperate, but she didn't want to understand anything. I told you how I know, I repeated. I have surveillance equipment all over the house. Well, there's nothing like that in Bailey's bedroom or the bathrooms. The next time you want someone to give you sex, you can use Bailey's room or the bathroom. That's disgusting, Dad, Bailey complained. Mom, you haven't slept with strange guys in my bed, have you? No, of course not, Mandy now looked indignant. And you don't have any surveillance equipment. On the contrary, I retorted. Again, I have connections with the mafia, and the CIA provides me with the latest secret super espionage equipment. Where is it? Mandy asked. Haven't you heard the word secret? I inquired. I can't show it to you. You don't have a security clearance. Bullshit, Mandy said with a sigh. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that I was stupid, I got caught, and now I have to make things right. What was your plan? I asked. I didn't have it, she said. I didn't think I'd get caught. I've only done it twice, Cedric. It had to be the last time. Oh, all right then, Bailey interjected with a high five. Since it was only twice, and you didn't think you were going to get caught, then it's okay. No, it's not, I'm just explaining. It wasn't okay, Mandy said. By the way, a thought occurred to me. How did you plan to convince me that I should believe everything you say? I've never lied to you, Cedric, she replied. We have always been honest with each other. Um, well, there are at least two instances I can think of right now, I said. She had the decency to blush. I meant besides that. Do you think I'm a liar? I think you are, Bailey said. Mandy looked indignant. I always say. Apparently, even she realized how ridiculous that sounded. I'm not a liar, she said nonetheless. Okay, I lied to you about it, Cedric. I didn't know what to do. I hoped you wouldn't find out. I've never lied to you about anything else. What's your point? I asked. I did something stupid, Mandy said. It was only twice, and when yesterday was supposed to be the last time, I'll never do it again. So you just punched him goodbye? Bailey asked. No, yes. You're totally confusing me. It doesn't matter how many times, I said. It doesn't matter that you were going to stop. All that matters is what you did. Amanda stared at us with hunted eyes. If you would just stop interrupting me and let me explain, she started to say and stopped as if in mid-jump as we both raised our hands. I told you I don't want to hear any explanations. I repeated. All I want to hear is what you're going to do. She sat with her hands folded in her lap and began to cry again. I don't know, she wailed. What do you want me to do? Well, no, you can't take it out on me, I said. You mess this up, you fix it. I don't know what to do, she sobbed. Well, I hope you'll let me know when you figure it out, I said. In the meantime, I think you should move your things to the guest room. 
I'd like to ask you to leave, but I can't make you. But I don't want you anywhere near me. She burst into tears again. Please don't make me do this, she begged. It's pretty cruel, Daddy, Bailey interjected. Did you ever sleep on that bed? No, I replied. What's wrong with that? Trust me, it sucks, she said. I think you must have bought it on sale 50 years ago. I'll go back to my apartment and my mom can take my bed. Anyway, I don't want to be here with her. Don't sleep with anyone in my bed, Mom. Mandy threw her a pitying look. How can you be so mean to me? Well, I thought you might want to get away from the security cameras for your little afternoon fun, Bailey giggled. If you're bringing home some scruffy guy, you should use the bathroom. You're not using my bed. It was better than stand-up comedy. I wanted Bailey to stay just to hear her banter. On second thought, I said, I don't want to sleep on the bed in my room either. Jack and all your other mistakes probably left beak marks on it. There was no one else here? Mandy was practically screaming. There was just, just Jack. And it would never happen again. I changed the sheets and put in a new mattress pad. She looked at me and I shook my head. I remember that blood, I told her. When you hit him on the head, he was bleeding on the mattress, wasn't he? You never cut yourself when you shaved your legs? She looked guilty. I cleaned him with bleach, she said. I didn't beat him, you did. Still, other people's blood is dangerous. I just thought I should mention it. Working in hospitals, you learn things like that. I could get AIDS. Well, in the meantime, I think I'll go check out Adams. Adams was the place Mandy always wanted me to take her for the weekend. She looked at me with startled eyes. Do you want to try it, babe? I asked Bailey. I hear they have a great restaurant. We could hang out by the pool, maybe get in a hot tub or sauna, rent a two-bedroom, drink some wine, and watch a movie or something. Yes, that's what I dream of all the time. Bailey seemed to be utterly thrilled at this prospect. She's not old enough to drink, Mandy objected. We've agreed that she won't drink until she's 21. Yes, but it will only be in our room, I replied. And she'll be with her old man. I'll keep an eye on her. Besides, we need to drown our sorrows in the vine. Please, Cedric, don't go, Mendy pleaded. If anyone has to go, it's me. We can't deal with this if you're not here. Well, no, you're not staying in some fancy hotel while I sleep in bed with AIDS, I said. No sense in both of us risking our health. I'm going to go pack a bag. I'll wait in my car, Bailey said. I'm not staying here with that slutty girl. Mandy gave a quiet howl of dismay, but Bailey and I had already started moving. I quickly packed up my stuff, took enough for a couple days, and we drove to Adams. We had a good time there. I decided I had a wonderful daughter. We were both a little depressed, but the setting distracted us, and we did get a little intoxicated. Bailey was a happy drunk, and her mood was contagious. I had a little trouble falling asleep, and I suspect she did too. But the wine helped, and I felt pretty decent in the morning. We had breakfast and tried to talk about the future. What are you going to do, Daddy? Bailey asked. I don't know, I said. First, I think, go see a lawyer. Do you think that's something you'll overcome and stay with her? She inquired. I don't think so, baby, I replied. Would you be able to get over something like that? No, but I haven't been in a marriage for 23 years. You put a lot into it. I know, I said. The problem was that 23 years seemed to mean a lot more to me than it did to Mendy. When she went after Jack's big friend, it pretty much told me that me, you, and those 23 years didn't mean that much to her. Bailey looked sad. Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm going back to class, Dad. Are you going home? I think I'm going to stay here one more night, I answered. I'll be back tomorrow night. I'll have to face some old songs about the main thing, but sooner or later it will happen. I can't run away from it forever. She hugged me tightly, kissed me, and left. I knew I would be okay as long as I had my baby. She had always been my girlfriend, and that wasn't going to change. When I pulled into the driveway, I breathed deeply for a while and then went to tease the lion in his den, so to speak. Mandy was sitting at the kitchen table when I walked in. She clearly hadn't had a very good time. Her eyes were red and puffy, and her hands were clenched into fists. My stomach turned sour, and I went to pour myself a glass of milk. Cedric, 
I need to, she began. I interrupted her. Just stop, Mandy. Do you really imagine I care about what you need? I need a wife who doesn't fuck men in our bed. Bailey needs a mom she won't be ashamed of, and you still want to tell me what you need? She started to cry. That's not what I meant, she sobbed. Of course I know that. What I wanted to say is that in order for me to start repairing the damage I've done, I, I, uh, she could barely hold back from saying, I need to. You what? I have to tell you something, she finally said. I have to try to figure out exactly what you want me to do. I want you to come with me to Robinson's office tomorrow, I said. Her face paled even more. The lawyer's office? Why do you want to go there, Cedric? It's what people do when they get divorced, I told her. I don't want a divorce, she wailed. Well, that's weird, I replied. When you sleep with men other than your spouse, it usually happens. It wasn't men, she protested. It was just one man, and it only happened twice before you caught me. Why should I believe you? I don't know, her voice sounded unhappy. Nevertheless, I'm telling the truth. I know I made a huge mistake, Cedric. I was weak and foolish. I never imagined things would escalate as they have. Please, Cedric, can't you just talk to me? Tell me what I can do to fix this. I can't imagine, I said. What would I do to fix this with you if you caught me sleeping with Lauren on our bed? I'd probably go to Robinson and start the divorce, she said. I hope you're more generous than I am. I know you are. I'm a selfish bitch, I know that, Cedric. But I apologize to you. Mandy, I don't know what to say back, I told her. I'm the kind of guy who loves one woman. My wife has to be one man oriented. I thought that's what you were, and I was wrong. No, no, you weren't wrong, she protested. I was just being stupid and using terrible judgment. I'm going to see a therapist, Cedric. I'll go to counseling with you. I'm going to start going to church. Maybe Bailey will let me go with her. I'm sorry, Cedric. I know that's not all I'm going to do. Please just give me a chance. What the hell? I lived with this woman for 23 years. I'd loved her. Even though Bailey seemed to be okay with everything I wanted to do, would she lose respect for me if I just kicked her mother to the curb? I didn't know the answer to either question. I looked over at Mandy. She sat there with frightened eyes, looking at me like a puppy who tore up your slippers and knows he's in big trouble now. Amanda, you screwed up on this one, I said. I don't know how you're going to convince me that I can trust you again. I don't know how you're going to get me to look at you as desirable again. I'm willing to give you a chance, but we'll just have to see how it goes. Bailey called the next morning and told me that Mandy had asked to go to church with her the following Sunday. I told her what was going on. I'm glad, Daddy, Bailey said. She's a stupid bitch, but I love her, and she's my mom. I'm mad as hell at her, and I'm not going to put up with it for a long time yet, but I know she loves you and you love her. I'll help in any way I can. I love you, Daddy, and I'll always be there for you. Thank you, baby, I said, swallowing the huge lump in my throat. You just worry about me, and I love you, too. I think we'll work it out. Mandy is a beautiful woman, and I'm sure I'll remember those 23 good years enough to dull the memory of that horrible day. We'll just have to see what happens. I've sent a message to Google. They want better answers to some common questions.